Welcome to the Cutting Edge Convention, a worldwide movement to revolutionize your life. No more stumbling around in the dark, wasting precious weeks, months, and years trying to figure it out on your own. Get ready for valuable innovations and strategies. And now, here's your host, Marcy Peters, the Age Backward Mentor. Welcome back to the Cutting Edge Convention, innovations to revolutionize your life. I'm your host, Marcy Peters, the Age Backward Mentor. I help smart, successful men and women step into a life they love and a body they love being in and avoid traditional aging by aging backward. Today, we're going to be talking about health hacks. So this is going to be a really um, fun and exciting and enlightening conversation. I have TJ Anderson here with me. And let, let me tell you about TJ before we jump into the topic. Uh, TJ is a clinical health coach, entrepreneur, and holistic health hacker. He is the author of The Art of Health Hacking. He works with organizations, high performers, and regular busy people who are ready to upgrade their lives and their health. TJ, welcome. Thank you, Marcy. It's an honor and uh, excited to be here today. Yeah, yeah. I'm so glad you could join us. So what is The Art of Health Hacking? You bet. Great question. Well, as you mentioned, uh, that's a book that the first book I've written, it's the name of that book that just launched inside of a crowdfunding campaign. So Congratulations. Um, thank you very much. That'll be coming out uh, with more information on that over the summer as I land with the publisher and actually have a physical copy. But, but more than anything, the art of health hacking has like, was my calling to, to write my own self coach approach towards, as I call it, towards like improving and evolving how I look at my health, um, to be like beyond the physical, for example, um, and find that happy medium. And, and it's titled the art of health hacking because I believe we don't lack the science information or technology to live healthy and that we lack at times the art and the creativity to know how to use those things properly, right? And so the idea is to inspire people to become their own health coach in their own life and, and become a health hacker um, in, a, in a creative and artful way and have fun doing it. So, cause sometimes you can get really overwhelmed with by the information and the science and all that stuff. So I don't know if, how, how you relate to that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it's an art and it's a journey and it's an ongoing thing that um, we get to each keep refining for ourselves, which is um, frustrating at times and also a beautiful gift as well. Yes. So Amen. TJ, how did you become a health hacker? What's your story? Yeah, honestly, like the story kind of goes um, I'm from Iowa, Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, so this boy from small town Iowa kind of wakes up around the value of eating and living healthier uh, about six or seven years ago after graduating from college and did a lot of reflection on my experience in college and looked at my habits, my lifestyle, how I felt and how I wanted to feel. As I started to experiment with eating healthier, that's what led me down the path of making a big jump from business finance and insurance where I was working jumping all the way over to the health and wellness space. So got into health coaching, got really passionate about like fitness and, and got into insanity. And uh, I was a group fitness instructor at a local YMCA back in Iowa. And then I met a photographer in church. She connected me with an agency in Iowa to explore modeling. And this was about three years ago that I moved from Des Moines, Iowa down to Miami, Florida. Um, kind of a culture shock for this Iowa guy. <laughs> and I spent four months in Miami and basically um, a little bit fell into ego um, and struggled with perfection mindset around the physical body. And, you know, my six pack wasn't good enough for the cameras, or at least that's how I felt. Um, so uh, that was a big awakening experience for me. Came home back to Iowa and really started to reflect, do a lot of... <laughs> healing, a lot of emotional healing. And, and that's when I started to write this book and, and kind of learn more about what's possible with like prevention and the role of like, like cleansing and healing the emotional part of our lives. So the big part of the book is 
the emotional journey, the inner game of health. And so this is the, I created like a, um, a business card with my book cover on it. So I added a little heart there in the middle. If you can, Mm. you can see that, but so anyways, I I just self proclaimed that, you know, I, I, I'm an, I'm a holistic health hacker, you know, and, and approaching health holistically and, and taking like in reclaiming ownership of that. And that like, it's great to be able to build a next level, like preventative based healthcare team, but we can also like, like do a lot of like self coaching and, and biohacking to advance our health and performance. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I'd love to hear some of your favorite health hacks. If you could pick out your top few and share those with us. You betcha. Well, health can sometimes be complex and overwhelming to people. And, and so for me personally in my own life, and when I look to help, you know, support others, I like to really start with the basics, right? So in the fundamentals, uh, I feel like the fundamentals are priority number one before we kind of reach other aspects. And so some of those fundamentals are uh, getting sunlight first thing in the morning, full spectrum, like gazing, sun gazing, and just letting the body get energy first part of the morning. If you have access to sunlight first part of the morning, wherever you live, that ought to be one of your first top, top priorities to consider um, and get some grounding in. So connecting with mother earth. Um, so that is like a staple in my morning routine. Um, being mindful of the breath. I feel like the breath guides everything. So, so there's a lot of great like new trends and breath work. And I would say, pick one for people and experiment and see what works for you. But whatever it is, develop some sort of routine that you can add presence and an awareness to your breath um, because it can help prevent stress and do a lot of other fun things. But I also love experimenting. So those are some of the like fundamental stuff Um, uh, as is like annual blood work, advanced blood work to understand exactly what's going on in the body. So you can like, have a proper guide and plan and approach to like customize your own nutrition and, and supplement and really your overall lifestyle strategy. So I would add that one is in as a third kind of fundamental for people. And, and that's kind of what I've done as a clinical health coach is to kind of like bridge the gap to help like connect the consumers with, um, you know, a naturopath and, and advanced blood work and what are all these direct to consumer lab testing opportunities out there um, because otherwise you know if I were to make like a, a nutrition or supplement suggestion for people right now you know it's everything ought to be personalized and where we're heading right now in healthcare yeah. and I think you agree with that so definitely yeah, yeah. bioindividuality is really important yeah. so that you're not supplementing the wrong things under over supplementing um, definitely yeah I love totally. your suggestions about the sunlight though um, and breathing, breathing is so simple and it's so important. It's easy to overlook. <laughs> right. And same with sunlight. Totally. I mean, I don't know the stats on how many people are deficient in vitamin D, but it's honestly part of the reason why I moved out to California recently. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been from Iowa, you know, we, in the winter, which can last six months sometimes, uh, you, the average person normally doesn't like to spend time outside. And we don't have mountains in the winter to enjoy. Um, and so I learned that I was not only like deficient in vitamin D levels, uh, but I also um, had a genetic mutation for my ability to handle and process vitamin D and assimilate it. So. Um, kind of hacking it with both supplementing with the sunlight and, you know, from an actual supplement liquid form. But yeah, yeah. yeah I can definitely relate to that. I grew up in Seattle Ooh. and as Ooh. amazing as it is there, it's, um, it was hard for me. It was, I felt like staying in bed a lot and, <laughs> and then, um, and now in California, it's a completely different story and I have motivation and zest. It's, it's very different and there are other factors involved in that too but that was one of them. So seasonal affective disorder is real. <laughs> and I, and I have empathy for you in your <laughs> Seattle days. I haven't been in Seattle yet, but man, I can only imagine. Um, one other quick side health hack. Um, I'm a past like bulletproof ambassador. 
um, for like Bulletproof Coffee and the whole brand of mm -hmm. Bulletproof, that, that some people might be familiar with it. Um, and I just had a sip of not a Bulletproof, something that I've been experimenting with recently is really cutting out caffeine to experiment with like, um, not all caffeine, but like cutting out, like giving a break from Bulletproof mm -hmm. Coffee and, and which sometimes can be a little over acidic. It, it can have health benefits to it. And there's also some great alternatives like creating like a hot tea or a tonic, mm -hmm. for example. So uh, my lovely lady Amanda has turned me on to her tonic creations, which are unsweetened like a nut milk, for example, mixed with superfoods and herbs and adaptogens and mm -hmm. medicinal mushrooms and that sort of thing. So that's what I'm drinking right now. I, I got some chaga and some collagen protein and, mm -hmm. and uh, coconut milk, but Anyways, <laughs> that sounds amazing. Um, I'm right? also a fan of taking breaks from caffeine or, you know, possibly not having it in your life at all, depending on how you react to it. Again, that, that right. bio individuality. I know for me, even one cup and cup and I don't have it every day, but when I do have it, it's like, Ooh, it's a little much and it's just one. So, um, yeah. So finding something else and I, I love what you're suggesting there. That's great. Cool. All right, so let's talk about stress and burnout. This is a big issue for a lot of people <laughs> and, um, and overwhelm along with making these choices and these decisions and, and um, you know, up-leveling up their health. So how do you like to deal with stress and burnout? What are some tips there? Yeah, uh, well, we talked about our relationship with caffeine a little bit. We talked about breath work. Both of those, I think, play a big role in this. Mm -hmm. But more than anything, the mindset of um, I must work faster or I must like the goal is getting more work done in less time that can only really take you so far mm -hmm. in my experience at least. And so having that balance between like self care and high performance is kind of like that edge that I personally like to live on. And, and, um, because I'm committed to the mission in the world and what I'm creating, right? And so for those listening to this, like everyone's kind of on the spectrum of their passions, what they're creating, whether they're like super driven creator, like entrepreneur or, or, or maybe serving another company or doing other work, no matter what it is, for people to avoid burnout and um, sleep is, is one of the first areas I would look at. So optimizing mm -hmm. sleep as like foundational because when Absolutely. you can, you know, have proper evening routines to ensure quality sleep, not just quantity. Quantity, of course, can be important, but like, you know, blocking blue light late at night with blue blockers. Like if we were doing this interview later in the afternoon or at night, like I have my giant blue blockers on right now, <laughs> um, not because they're super fashionable, but what they do to allow proper melatonin production in my brain, because we are just, I mean, whether it's artificial blue light late at night or EMF waves that can come through Wi-Fi, like I do my best to turn off Wi-Fi in the house while I sleep um, and all of those kind of, and, and, and really developing that evening routine for sleep mm -hmm. can like allow for you to go to sleep at peace, take the mind off of the work, right? Kind of unplug and then wake up refreshed, right? And then that's like, can lead you into the day. Um, so I, I'd say that's one uh, area to look into. Um, I would also say if you crave salt, um, that's not a bad thing. That means you need salt. Uh, a lot of people are not getting enough high quality salt in their diet. Mm -hmm. And so I'll have salt first thing in the morning uh, to allow my body to use that as energy and and, uh, and I love the taste of it. And so it's great. You know, it's essential too. I act, I went to the ER about a year ago, side story related to burnout for having, uh, well, a lifestyle that was dehydrated, ketogenic diet, pulled out some hydrating foods, which the ketogenic diet can have a lot of value. I like to kind of associate with like keto esque now, but so I had that going on and like bulletproof coffee and it, I felt I, like I collapsed at brunch mm. and my sister thought it was a food allergy. And so she, <laughs> bless her heart, I ended up getting two EpiPens lodged in each of my legs. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. And the whole time, I mean, I come to find out at 24 hours later, it wasn't a food allergy. It was low sodium. 
So my sodium was deathly low. And so all of these are kind of factors of like burnout, stress in the body, adrenal fatigue, like what, however you want to describe it. So, um, so being mindful and knowing where your electrolytes are at is, is essential. <laughs> yeah. So sleep, um, having good quality salt, the sea salts and yes. uh, with all the minerals and so forth. And, um, and you mentioned mindfulness um, in a different context, but I think mindfulness comes into that too. And that goes back to the breath work we're talking about. It's kind of like all roads lead to this conscious awareness, mindfulness type of thing where you can slow down in a second just by simply breathing or becoming mindful. Right. Um, yeah. Actually, finding ways to be creative, to change your state, you know? Yeah. Actually, do you want to take us through a quick breath work, uh, whatever your favorite is, so that we can give people the experience while we're here? Sure. Why not? I mean, um, <laughs> I won't do like a, like a full on like Wim, Wa Wim Hof sort of breathing just because, you know, we're sitting here in front of a computer, but that is something cool. People haven't heard of Wim Hof to do a quick Google search on him. But um, a quick, easy one, honestly, is the a little bit of al alternate nostril breathing or um, uh, I think it's called pr pranayama breathing. I'm not exactly certain on the, that name of it. Um, but yeah, alternating breath work. Like, so uh, alternating at e each nostril. So placing your thumb on, on my right nostril here having the hand up like this. Sometimes I'll even like put a pointer finger to like show the third eye right here. Close the eyes and breathe at like a sustainable pace. So you're inhaling through one nostril, closing that one, and then breathing out of the other nostril. And then breathing up that one. Rotate, <laughs> breathe out of the <laughs> next one. So that's it's a great way to clear the mind and both right and left hemispheres of the brain and, and get yeah, oxygen flowing. Yeah, synchronize both sides. Yeah, and all you have to do is just use, you know, one hand. It's so simple. So simple. Yeah, well, a lot of breathing techniques are so simple. And, and so that's fantastic because you can do it right? at a car, at a stoplight, or you can do it at, at your desk or anywhere. Exactly. So honestly, yeah, for people that are listening or watching this right now, like try it out right now as as we're talking here and and, and um, see what you think if you yeah. haven't done it before. Well, everyone else can be doing it for the whole rest of this interview <laughs> <laughs> right? while we're talking and they're listening. <laughs> Amen. I would also throw in heart centered breathing is a different type of breathing where you can place your intention and attention around um allowing the heart to be involved with the breath work because some of the science out there that shows what heart centered breathing can do related to increasing what's called coherence around um, your heart rate variability, um, which is um, a term that's grown right now in science related to like preventing stress and having like healthy breath routines and, and a uh, healthy heart rate and, HeartMath is an organization that's done a lot of great work on that. So I love to use their, they have this device, you've probably seen it called the Inner Balance. Mm -hmm. It's a great tool, hundreds of bucks for people to use that attaches into their phone and has like a nice app and image that allows you to like watch and track your heart rate, rate variability, HRV, which is a great, really important measure for overall um, health and 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 humans and so uh, that's something for people to look into as well mm, nice well there's so many great tools so and many. <laughs> ideas out there um, so TJ is there anything that we haven't covered in terms of health hacks that you want to make sure and talk about today you bet well and, and so in the book um, like so the the art of health hacking book you know part of the premise is you know do a lot I've done a lot of work and and health coaching, not just as a health coach, but um, doing work to train existing health coaches, or, or I should say existing health professionals as health coaches, and, and spent a lot of time understanding like, you know, the science of behavior change and what, what is 
the trans theoretical model of behavior change, for example, and motivational interviewing, which is a technique to have conscious communication that intentionally has like this conversation flow model for people. So uh, I would encourage people to be mindful of the language they use to themselves. So the self-talk, uh, Dr. Kristen Neff wrote a book called um, Self-Compassion, um, The Proven Power of Being Kind to Yourself. Um, anyways, great book, and it talks about self-compassion versus self-esteem. And um, what that represents is opportunity for us to communicate with ourselves in a more conscious, intentional, loving way, um, and in a way to understand like what's going to fuel momentum in my lifestyle change? What's gonna allow me and support me with creating sustainable behavior change so that we don't get overwhelmed by all that's out there, right? And so some of those techniques are um, really getting clear on the priority, so like what's most important, and getting clear on like why that habit or behavior is important to you. Um, it's kind of like a self-coaching hack for like behavior change. Um, as is celebrating progress. So I have, I have a hashtag that when I was in Miami, I started using and it's health. Yeah. Hashtag health. Yeah. And it's meant to, um, inspire health consciousness and celebrating, celebrating areas of our health that we want to celebrate. Um, because celebrating progress can fuel motivation, um, in a, in a really strong way for people when they use it right. And so I, I uh, it kind of goes hand in hand with gratitude, but mm, celebrating sounds more fun. <laughs> so that, that's a, yeah, yeah. Okay, great, I like that. Thank you for sharing so many um, tips and ideas. And um, so what are you most excited about moving forward? I know your book is coming out, you have a lot on the horizon, but what are you most excited about? Yeah, you bet, well, I've been working on this book for like two or three years behind the scenes and, and have uh, grown excited about starting to share it and starting to kind of transition on to next projects. But um, uh, for example, like I'm leading a, my first like three day retreat here in, in San Diego at the end of April. Um, it's called, it's like a, so it's a three day experiential like indoor outdoor um, health hacking retreat called elevate your state live mm -hmm. so it's kind of a new brand i'll be rolling out what it means to elevate your state and um so it's gonna be an awesome event we got some cool stuff going on there with like an outdoor hike to end the day with like farm to table catered meal and bringing in dry farm wines for example which is a great company that sources uh low sugar low alcohol hangover free high quality wine uh, I don't know if you've tried them, Marcy, but definitely worth looking up dry farm wines. Mm -hmm. But I'm excited about um, I'm excited about all the all the innovation that's happening, and and so like like what you're creating here, and and the platforms that exist to share really important messages for people from people that have walked down these paths and, and have had these experiences where they have lessons to share and, and that they've learned from. And so that's how I see myself. I don't necessarily always identify as a health expert per se. I like to inspire people to realize that they can become their own health expert. And so I like to call myself a self expert. Um, so I'm here to continue to help inspire more people to become self experts in their quest for optimal health. So, um, and they're not alone. So uh, yeah, so the events, the retreats, this is an area that I'm excited about. I'm excited about going to the beach later, getting some sunlight, <laughs> getting in the water. Um, nice. Yeah, and, and so those are a few things that uh, I'm really excited about. You know what, you bring up a good point. Um, a lot of times when people say, what are you excited about? You're thinking about the big things, but it's all those little things. That's what our daily lives consist of. And if, so if you can start to be excited about, you know, just whatever things you're up to today, uh, then that, yeah. That creates a different energy. Totally, a hundred percent. Yeah, I just got this new pan, this new planner called the Panda Panda Planner. Um, anyways, super clever name, but a great flow for productivity, and it has you celebrate the things you're excited about. 
So big time. Yeah, love <laughs> yeah, it. Small things, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I know you have a free gift for everyone. Would you like to tell us about it? Yes. So uh, we're going to be sharing uh, some videos and a guide to help start your own self-coaching process. Um, some tools that I talk about in the book. Um, and maybe we'll throw in like a sample chapter of the book for people. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm really excited to kind of provide people um, kind of deeper glimpses of stuff that we talked about here around kind of the strategy to build kind of that 30 to 90 day like self experiment in these major areas of our health. So we'll have a video series um, on that for everyone. Nice. Yeah. Okay, great. So I'll have the link for everyone and that's going to be your next step uh, right after you finish with us here um, to go and grab that. So just use the link. Uh, TJ, thank you so much for being part of the Cutting Edge Convention this year. You betcha. Had a blast, Marcy. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. And to everyone who joined us here today, thank you for taking part in the Cutting Edge Convention. I'm Marcy Peters, your Age Backward Mentor, and I want to wish you a happy, healthy day. Until next time, take care. Thank you for being part of the Cutting Edge Convention. We don't want you to miss a single valuable session. To have the entire event available to you at any time, Purchase the package now before the event ends. That's when the price goes up. And watch your emails to get your next steps from Marcy.